When Philippine Airlines, the largest and flagship carrier of the archipelago country, declared bankruptcy in 2021, it raised fear amongst the business and aviation community. If a company as big as Philippine Airlines can collapse due to the subsequent lockdowns, which led to the accumulation of debt and extreme losses, then what more for the smaller aviation companies, or even other similar firms operating in the tourism industry? Yet as time showed, while there were many bankruptcies and failures along the way, Philippine Airlines eventually exited its bankruptcy, announcing that it has survived yet another crisis. However, there's just one unique company inside the air travel industry, which is known as Cebu Pacific Air Incorporated, arguably the second largest airline company in the country and a major contender to Philippine Airlines, but more focused on the lower cost market. But here's the thing with Cebu Pacific, even though it is the second largest in the aviation space, just behind Philippine Airlines, and the company operates as a low-cost carrier, it does not mean that the company had not fared the same financial crisis the Philippine Airlines did in recent years. Yet as we exit COVID-19 and border after border slowly opens up, unlike Philippine Airlines, Cebu Pacific never really went into bankruptcy. Or rather, the company had actually fact fared better during the crisis, which we will discuss further in the video. Does this simply mean that Cebu Pacific, however, had better financial management compared to Philippine Airlines? Or does being a low-cost airline imply that they're in a better fiscal position compared to a full-service airline? Let us understand everything in more detail, and what really enabled Cebu Pacific to be in a better financial position. Let us address one important factor first about airline companies in the Philippines before anything else. Cebu Pacific and Philippine Airlines have long been listed in the public stock exchange both having their shares in the Philippines and foreign exchanges. Therefore, this should simply suggest that these respective corporations are owned publicly. People like you or me can buy shares in the company whenever we want to. And it should also suggest that it's not influenced by a single family or a parent company. However, here's the thing about many companies around the Philippines. Both of them, Cebu Pacific and Philippine Airlines, although listed on the public stock exchange, is still majority owned by their respective holding companies. Philippine Airlines is owned majority by the LT Group, whereas Cebu Pacific is owned majority by JG Summit Holdings. Both of these are massive conglomerates. Hence, if any of these individual companies are in trouble, the holding company will step up, which was the case during the recent financial crisis. Their respective holding companies have stepped up to help the airline. This is one of the reasons why both companies are also still operating today, because they received help either financially or even through outside management, which helped the company stay afloat. One instance was when Lucio Tan, the chairman of LT Group, and also the chairman of Philippine Airlines, had injected nearly 300 million US dollars. Its holdings company aside, let us discuss the other intricacies that can tell us how the company truly performed, which is under the financial statements of each company. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, around the end of 2019, Cebu Pacific had approximately total liabilities of about 112 billion pesos, which is just around 2.1 billion US dollars. For context, liabilities are simply defined as the financial obligation of a company. In a linear view, and just by looking at the total sum of these liabilities, may well seem a lot, especially if you're not someone who looks at financial statements on a frequent basis. However, when we actually compare this $2.1 billion worth of liabilities to the company's total assets, which is yet another term that can be understood as what the company owns, then we will have a clearer view of its stability. For the same fiscal year, Cebu Pacific had 157 billion pesos, or more than $3 billion. Therefore, its total assets were way more than its total liabilities. But we are still missing out on context, and we can't conclude on these two factors alone. What we need to understand is current assets, which is a term that simply means the money they hold right now, or they're going to receive in the next 12 months. In Cebu Pacific's case, it was just 25 billion pesos, or half a billion dollars. Yet its current liabilities, money it has to pay in the next 12 months is over 42 billion pesos, or roughly $850 million. Although this is speculation, since the company had fared stability over its lifetime, the company will be able to generate enough money through its normal operations to pay down these coming liabilities. In simpler terms, they will generate money eventually through airfare sales and pay their debts. Yet the problem was everything was shut down immediately. Hence, not only could it generate money from operations to pay down its debt, it too had more liabilities than its assets. Thus, by the end of 2020, its current assets collapsed, dropping to just 12 billion pesos, while its current liabilities, albeit dropping, but still at a tremendous amount of about 33 billion pesos, almost thrice its current assets. 
Therefore, if we take a look at the company based on its reports, everything should start to look bleak for Cebu Pacific. Its money was dwindling down, and its repayments to financial obligations were slowly creeping up. A company for the most part has to continuously pay down its obligations. If not, it will either declare bankruptcy to restructure its debt, or worse, be liquidated. But its financial obligations were not the only issue. The company was also losing a massive amount of money. By the end of 2020, Cebu Pacific reported that it had a net loss of 22 billion pesos, or around $450 million. So how did the company survive? Well, it did what most other companies did during the crisis, and much so for Philippine Airlines, raise money. In October 2020, Cebu Pacific immediately announced half a billion dollars, or 25 billion pesos in additional capital raised, through two financial means, convertible preferred shares and privately placed convertible bonds. And by the first month of 2021, Cebu Pacific announced a further $250 million share sale to help its operation. Hence, the company floated and eased its financial crippling pain. However, one should definitely ask, did Philippine Airlines not do the same? Well, they did as we mentioned a few seconds ago. It received a ton of money as well, but it was just not enough. You see, by the end of 2020, the same fiscal year compared to Cebu Pacific earlier, Philippine Airlines had current assets of about 32 billion pesos, but its current liabilities? A whopping 196 billion pesos, six times more than its current assets. A quick comparison was that the difference between Cebu Pacific and Philippines Airlines 12-month financial obligations was six times higher, whereas Cebu Pacific was only three times. While Philippine Airlines could have raised money just like how Cebu Pacific did, the issue was, how was it going to raise a whopping 150 billion pesos or so? Compare that to Cebu Pacific, which only needed around 20 billion pesos. Therefore, the company had no choice but to declare bankruptcy in the early months of 2021. Now, if we move on to the case of why Cebu Pacific floated better, we can simply conclude based on these financial metrics that Cebu Pacific was just in a better financial status. Yes, that is true, but it is also because of the company's nature as a smaller aviation company and also as a low cost carrier. Indeed, as we noted earlier, they had less of a cost compared to Philippine Airlines. Cebu Pacific only lost 22 billion pesos and a further 25 billion pesos in both years of 2020 and 2021. Yet Philippine Airlines lost 75 billion pesos in 2020. However, due to the nature of its bankruptcy filing in 2021, it helped alleviate the company and raise money, hence ending the year with a net positive. So does this suggest that Cebu Pacific was in a better position compared to Philippine Airlines? And it was all due to its low cost nature? Well, here's the other problem that we're missing out on. Cebu Pacific is not on green territory yet. You see, until this very day, even after it had come out alive in a moment of financial deterioration, they're still losing money. As of the latest quarterly data published in September of 2022, the company still lost 2.5 billion pesos. Although small, it's still impacting the company's overall balance sheet. By the same quarterly report data, Cebu Pacific reported that it still held more liabilities than its assets, having negative equity. It's the first time to have negative equity since the latest available data that we can find as of 2016. Negative equity simply means that it still holds more liabilities than assets. Therefore, it is simply still not in the green as of the latest quarter. But that does not also mean that the company will declare bankruptcy. If the coming quarters prove to be better for the company, then we can immediately expect it to jump out of this looming negative territory. And as we may already expect, the world is now slowly opening up and Cebu Pacific, and might as well Philippine Airlines will continue to slowly generate back what they lost during the lockdowns. So in conclusion, what we found was that the company burnt less money during COVID-19, due to the company having a smaller operations level compared to Philippine Airlines, but also because it was a low-cost carrier, meaning it also has less of a cost. But we should also not forget that the company was in a better financial position than Philippine Airlines, and on its balance sheet it's not because Cebu Pacific was a low-cost carrier. But rather, it is known that Philippine Airlines had always held a massive amount of liabilities, even before COVID-19. For context, by the end of 2019, Cebu Pacific had a debt to equity of about 127%. Yet Philippine Airlines had stunningly more than 1,000%. But anyway, this is just our opinion and only serves entertainment purposes. Without regard to financial advice, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.